Hey there, Josh here from Limbo CMS, and today I'll be talking about lockout tagout procedure, also known as Lotto programs. In this video, I'll cover what exactly Lotto procedures are, when to use them, how to write one, and how to keep yourself out of trouble with your boss and OSHA. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button to receive notifications whenever we publish new videos just like this one. As you do that, let me start by trying to explain to you the importance of Lotto procedures. Imagine that it's 2 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Your on-call maintenance tech, who happens to have limited experience, must perform an emergency shutoff for a complex machine that they have never seen before. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Without a thorough lockout tagout procedure in place, disaster could always be waiting to strike. And trust me, it always happens at the most inconvenient times. So what does lockout tagout mean? Lotto is a set of safety protocols and checklists that protects workers from getting hurt by sudden machine startup or by releasing hazardous energy while performing maintenance activities. For example, a pneumatic press coming down while an employee is cleaning under it. Generally, hazardous energy is the big danger stuff. Things like electrical energy and wires, heavy mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic machinery, which are things operated by air or gas, natural gases, chemicals, and thermal energy are all potentially dangerous. Now, considering that these complex safety procedures can be a headache, you may imagine that there is some sort of regulation closely monitoring organizations to ensure the safety procedures are actually happening. Yes, that's right, OSHA standards. The uptight for your own good rules and regulations came about some 50 years ago with efforts by employers, unions, and trade associations together with now well-known national consensus and safety organizations, such as the National Safety Council, the American National Standards Institute, and the National Fire Protection Association. This means that organizations that fall within the criteria must comply with OSHA's lotto requirements. All the people you've come to know from the Because I Said So Club. But hey, they're not your enemies. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at which occasions we need to lock out, tag out. While most businesses that use heavy machinery and dangerous equipment have established lotto checklists, it does not apply in every case. According to OSHA, lotto generally applies to the servicing and maintenance of machines and equipment in which the unexpected energization or startup of the machines or equipment or release of stored energy could harm employees. In this case, it's probably easier to list the specific industries where lotto doesn't apply. And keep in mind that they don't apply because they have their own safety standards. So the industries that don't use lotto procedures are constructions, agricultural, longshore, marine terminals, shipyards, and oil and gas well drilling and servicing. To be safe, make sure to be constantly asking yourself questions like, could someone get injured while repairing this machine? Does this machine need to be taken offline for repairs and maintenance? And if the answer is yes, it's a lotto time. Let's take a look at why lotto procedures are so important. We already talked about compliance. That, of course, is top of mind for facility managers. There are huge fines involved for organizations that don't follow the regulations laid out by the Code of Federal Regulations. Fines can go up to $136,500 per violation. Employee safety is always right up there, too. Safety concerns, especially when working with hazardous materials like gas and toxic waste, make having a lotto procedure an absolute must. If lockout tagout practices are not followed, employees can be seriously injured or even killed by the machinery they use every day. A few years ago, a Wisconsin teen passed away after being pinned beneath a machine that had been properly de-energized. Multiple safety violations were found at the facility, including the failure to conduct periodic inspections of machine safety procedures and affix lockout devices to isolate energy before allowing employees to enter machine hazard areas. Unfortunately, this story isn't exactly unique. Tragic deaths do happen. That alone is a strong enough reason to follow lotto procedures. But stories like that also come with a lot of media coverage and lawsuits, which can ruin organizations from day to night. A common question here is, unless there is an accident, will OSHA really come to make an inspection? The answer is yes, at least once per year. Let's cover the main reasons OSHA will inspect your facility. The first one is obvious. If someone is injured or any worker's comp claim is filed, OSHA will visit the site to investigate the working conditions and regulations being upheld. And the second reason, a worksite or employee is in imminent danger. You typically see this when OSHA gets tipped off 
that your work site is unsafe and severe harm could happen to your team. And the third, if someone makes a complaint, your employees have the legal right to file a workplace safety violation complaint with OSHA. And OSHA takes these complaints very seriously. How OSHA responds to the criticism varies depending on the specific area of concern, the seriousness of the safety raise, and other factors. Referral from third parties is another reason an inspection would happen. And that's different from a complaint because a referral for an OSHA inspection can come about from many different situations, not just current or former employees. A few actual source examples of OSHA referral inspections include state or local police and fire departments or an employee's doctor, for example. Plan inspections are also common in the workplaces that have reported significantly higher injury rates compared to their peers. These scheduled inspections follow a surprise lottery site selection process. Keep in mind that when a compliance officer shows up to conduct a safety inspection, they're more likely to have a negative preconception of the site's safety compliance if you've had high injury rates reported. And that's why employers need to maintain accurate OSHA 300-301 record keeping logs and not over record injuries. For example here, many employers over report by including first aid cases in their records. In follow up visits, check if a previously cited organization has corrected violations received in an earlier inspection. And suppose an employer fails to correct a cited violation. In that case, an employer will be subject to a failure to abate offense which involves additional penalties until the violation is corrected. That's around $7,000 per day. An important observation here is that a failure to abate offense exists when a violation previously cited has never been brought into compliance and is observed in a later inspection. If, however, that violation was corrected only to happen again later, then OSHA may issue the employer a repeat violation with a penalty amount of up to $125,000. By this point, you've got the idea that you don't want to mess with neglecting your lotto safety protocols. So let's look at the details on how to write lotto procedures. The exact details of a lockout tagout procedure vary depending on the type of machinery in question. But I'll cover the main steps to help you get started. Note that these should be extremely thorough, leaving no room for interpretation, and no detail is too small to include in a suitable lotto procedure. Step one, prepare for the shutdown. All infected employees need to be notified that a lockout is being performed. The authorized worker performing this task should review the lotto procedure for the equipment that is about to get serviced and ensure that the lockout is being performed on the right piece of machinery. In step two, review the specific lotto procedure for the asset. The procedure should detail the specific steps necessary for shutting down, isolating, blocking, and securing equipment to control hazardous energy and measures for the placement removal, and transfer of lockout tagout devices. Through using a CMS like Limbal, it's possible to create checklists with machine-specific photos identifying energy isolation points, which makes the process much easier for techs. And step three is perform the shutdown. If the equipment is operating, your team must follow the standard stopping procedure. Employers must establish the procedures for removing the energy source from machines and putting the appropriate devices on them to prevent unexpected startup or re-energization. And step four, locate and disconnect all energy sources. The authorized person performing this action needs to be able to locate all primary energy sources like electricity, steam, water, gas, compressed air, and know how to disconnect them. In step five, place locks and tags. After the equipment has been isolated from its energy sources, it's time to install lockout devices on switches and controls and mark them with appropriate lockout tags. With so many products on the market designed to help keep your employees safe, selecting the most suitable solution for your application is a key to lockout effectiveness. Once selected, it's essential to document and use devices that best fit each lockout point. If you have complex locks, consider including visual instructions. Step six, release or block any stored energy. While the machine should be safely locked down at this point, there might be some residual energy to be blocked or released. Step seven, verify the lockout. When all this is done, it is important to ensure that the system is locked correctly. The best way to test that is to try and attempt the normal startup. If everything has been done correctly, nothing should start to move. And after the test, the controls need to be returned to the neutral position. In step eight, 
perform scheduled servicing. This is where maintenance techs step in to perform the necessary maintenance work and keep scheduled downtime as short as possible. If you're not sure if you can maintain the sustainability costs, know that in the long run, programs that lack sustainability tend to have higher prices because the lockout tagout program must be recreated each year. By simply maintaining your schedule throughout the year, you'll enhance your safety culture and use fewer resources because you won't need to reinvent the wheel each time. When looking at your program from this perspective, it's clear that a sustainable program helps you stay one step ahead while saving you time and money. Then we have step nine, restore the equipment to service. After the scheduled maintenance has been performed, the equipment will need to be restored to normal operating conditions. The lotto procedure should explain how to undo the lockout and reconnect all energy sources. This includes inspecting the machine's integrity and double checking that the area is clear before removing lotto devices. And the last thing here is people that use the machine should be notified that the lotto devices have been removed. And writing lotto procedures is one thing, but making sure a whole lotto program is efficient is a whole other thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what makes a successful lotto program. The first big thing is knowing your machines. Use lockout devices for all equipment that can be locked out. Ensure that new or overhaul equipment is capable of being locked out. Develop, implement, and enforce an effective tagout program if machines or equipment are not capable of being locked out. And assess all risks. Whenever new equipment is added or reconfigured in the plant, assess potential hazards and potential personnel exposure. All plant system components and energy isolation points need to be documented. As things change, the documentation must be diligently updated. That leads me to the next point. Keep through documentation. Once lotto procedures and equipment are in place, documentation is mandatory. This helps everyone understand what was done, what's planned to be done, who is involved, and what steps are needed for resolution. It's important that managers make procedures readily available up to date readable to anyone coming into contact with equipment or system. And many organizations leverage mobile CMS like Limbo so that lotto procedures can be in tech's hands at all times. And through the CMS, teams can quickly put together a work order template that walks techs through the lotto procedure for any specific asset. And they can then access it from their phone at all times. Next, we have training your team. An ongoing training program for lotto procedures should be part of and organizations training schedules. All parties involved in working with equipment or systems with hazardous energy sources must be required to participate. You should hold a briefing at each shift to familiarize everyone with the procedures and discuss the consequences of not following lotto procedures. When you're out managing your team, take some time to inspect and audit. Let the team know that you'll be making rounds from time to time to check and ensure that the safety program is being followed and stay up to date with the latest technology and best practices. To wrap things up here, let's take a quick look at some examples of lockout tagout programs. The first example comes from the University of Connecticut. The picture is just a screenshot of the table of contents to give you an idea of what it covers, but I'll leave the link to the entire document on this video's description. This second example is from the University of Colorado. As you can see, it's a bit more detailed. Feel free to explore these two examples on your own later, but keep in mind that their program might not be directly translatable for your business. And no one is too cool for occupational safety. And although it can be a lot of work to put together a robust safety plan, it benefits employees, management, and the company in big ways. Companies gain credibility by adhering to their commitments, displaying honesty and integrity, and reaching company goals through honorable conduct. An important player in creating a safe facility is quality maintenance work that keeps equipment in healthy operating conditions. Many organizations rely on CMS software to manage all maintenance work to ensure that maintenance tasks have been performed on time and up to a required standard. If you'd like to learn more about how Limbo CMS can help your organization streamline its maintenance management, then feel free to reach out to try the platform for free for up to 30 days. And I'll also add a link in the description below this video so you can go ahead and easily access it. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand the foundation of this key concept of facility management and that you now feel ready to start applying what you just learned. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with everything maintenance. With that said, I'll go ahead and see you in some of our following videos. Cheers.